we move on in the book of Matthew, chapter 20. And we will look at verses 17 through 19. And it says in verse 17, As Jesus was about to go up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside by themselves. And on the way he said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and will hand him over to the Gentiles to mock and scourge and crucify him. And on the third day he will be raised up. This is the third and final explanation or teaching to the disciples concerning Jesus' crucifixion or him being handed over to the Gentiles, the Romans, by Jews. He tells the disciples that he will be delivered to the chief priests and the scribes and that they will condemn him to death. This is the third time he's telling his disciples the same thing. But for some reason, his disciples miss again the meaning of what Jesus, Jesus is telling them. They don't understand what he's saying. They can't believe what he's saying. They believe him to be Messiah or a conquering Messiah type. One that can overthrow their oppressors, the Romans. So how can he be, be, be delivered over to the religious leadership of the land and then eventually to the Romans to be killed? His disciples, many times, did not understand what Jesus was saying, even though they spent most of the time with him, learning from him, being taught by him. So even those who are the closest to Jesus seem to always not understand what he was saying. But before the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, he tells his disciples one more time, this is what's going to happen to him. This is what's, what's awaiting for him in Jerusalem. Jesus had a fruitful ministry, sharing again the good news of the kingdom of God. Healing the sick, raising the dead. Teaching again that God loves them. But again, the Jews always seem to miss the understanding. They miss what he was saying. And so we see here with his disciples. They didn't comprehend what he was telling them. They're going up to Jerusalem. They will take him and condemn him to death. And then hand him over to the Gentiles, the Romans, who will then scourge him and crucify him. But on the third day, he will be raised up. Jesus tells the disciples he will be executed. But on the third day, he will rise. His disciples missed all that. They don't, they don't understand it. They will eventually. But for the moment, they, they have no clue what Jesus is saying. Because they, they have their own interest. They, their own understanding of what they thought Messiah should be. Same thing we have today. 
to many Christians, do they truly understand who Jesus Christ is? Today, Christ is being take, taken out of society, removed. They don't want to hear of Jesus Christ. They don't want to hear about God. They don't understand about God. Here, Jesus pulled aside his disciples and, and told them once again. And even then, they did not understand. Much so today. They don't understand. They don't understand their sinful life. They don't understand the life they're living is wicked before God. What they do understand is following their own interests. Like here, the disciples doing the same thing. Following their own way. To the disciples, they, they believed that Jesus here, the Messiah, was going to save them from the Romans, the oppressors who were, again, oppressing their land. They did not want to understand that their Messiah would be killed. But all this was God's plan from the beginning. Jesus Christ had to pay the price for the sin of the world. And this was to be done by Him dying on the cross. He needed to die to be raised. And in His being raised, to, be, to save all mankind from sin. That was God's great plan. To save man from sin. Because man in his sinful nature cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Only by the washing of the blood of Jesus on the sinner can the sinner come into the presence of God. That's the only way. But the disciples missed that. They didn't understand. They needed to learn that this was God's plan. Ultimately, Jesus Christ will go to the cross but be raised into glory, and in His glory, save mankind from their sin. Today, society, the world in itself, rebels against God. That's its tendency. It wants to rebel. It wants to turn away. He doesn't want anything to do with Jesus Christ, anything to do with God. But God in His mercy and His grace wants to save sinful man. Wants to save the rebellious person that wants to rebel, always to rebel, reject anything that is God. God offers salvation. He offers a way out of your wicked life. And that is through Jesus Christ. That was the plan. To save sinful man. To save us from our sinful nature, our character. For all are born into sin. That's our true nature. Sinful, wickedness. But God, by His mercy, has offered a way out of that life. And that is by Jesus dying on the cross and then raising up into glory on the third day. 
The disciples missed that. Jesus told them three times. And they missed it again. But like the disciples of then, we, we too missed as well what God tells us in His Word. He gives us examples. He continually tells us that we need to change our life. His Word reveals our sin. His Word tells us that we are sinful creatures. But He also tells us that through Christ we can be saved from sin. Satan constantly tempts us in this world. Satan constantly wants to pull us away from knowing God, finding God. Yet God is there, always there, reaching down to the sinner, reaching down to us, wanting to bring us out of the dark into the light. So like the disciples here, we miss, again, what, what God tells us many times. We, we miss what He wants us to do, what He wants us to say. That's why we need to constantly strive in His Word, meditate on His Word, Wanting, to, wanting the Holy Spirit to work within our hearts to reveal the truth found in His Word. The disciples eventually will understand that this is God's plan and rejoice that the risen Lord has come that the risen Lord wants us to be holy individuals before Him. And we should not be those who are not knowledgeable about His Word, about His plans for us. Because His Word reveals it to us. And so we, we thank you, Lord, that as you have revealed your plan here, that you came and gave of your Son, you sacrificed of yourself to save sinful man from sin, that the gift of your Son on the cross and that he was raised on the third day into glory. That's the greatest gift you have given mankind. That we don't need to be held in prison with sin. That we don't need to be locked in sin. That we can find your love, Father, and your grace through the son, your Son, Jesus Christ. Oh, we can comprehend your word and understand your word and meditate on your word to know truth. And to know the plan you want for mankind. Open up our hearts, Lord, to your will. And open up our very lives, Father, to your will. So that we will not falter. So that we will not fall away from knowing that you have a great plan for us. For your children. We know that millions upon millions of people right now reject you, doubt you, turn away. They don't want to know you at all. But yet you want to know them, Father. You want them to know them in their heart, mind, and soul. And so we pray, Lord, again, by your Spirit working within the hearts of all men. That you reveal to them that you want to save them from sin. You want to save them from judgment. But they need what they need to do, Lord, is turn from sin. 
and turn to your son. Recognize that they are sinners, as we all are, in need of a Savior. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.